Hello everyone, this is Mohammed. I'm one of the urologists in Hampshire Hospitals. I'm an assistant lecturer in Ancient University in Egypt. And in this video, I will discuss with you some frequently asked questions about the FRCS urology exam. So the first question is, what is the FRCS exam? So it is the fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons and is a professional qualification to practice as a senior surgeon in Ireland and in the United Kingdom. The fellowship should be perceived as a validation of a surgery's knowledge, experience and the training. So in other words, this exam allows you to obtain the recognition certificate to work as a senior, independent, and re-owned surgeon in the UK. The second question, which is really commonly asked, is there a difference between the international one and the national FRCS? So to answer to that, we need to know that the Intercollegiate FRCS examinations are administered by two committees. The first one is the Joint Committee of the uh, Intercollegiate Examination, the GCIE, which handles the domestic examination in the UK. And the other one is the GSCFE, which is a Joint Surgical College Fellowship Examination, which handles the overseas one. Another question is that, can the FRCS International be used to get a GMC registration? And the answer is yes, you can use the FRCS International to get a GMC registration as the GSCFE or the International FRCS has now been listed as an acceptable post to graduate the um, qualification on a GMC website. But because of some differences between the curriculum between the two exams, the GMC doesn't accept the GSCSA1 as a knowledge evidence in the scissor application. Third so question, um, when should I take it? Most of the trainees said the exam during the last one or two years of their training or during the ST5 or ST6 years in the UK training program. So my advice in this point is to take it as early as possible when you feel you are ready as it will be an important step either to finish your training or in your scissor application so who is eligible um, to be eligible to enter that exam you must hold a medical qualification that is recognized by the GMC and you must be qualified for at least six years Number two, the applicant must provide an evidence that he had reached a standard of clinical competence, which is defined by the intercollegiate surgical curriculum. The third point, that the evidence must be consistent with the three structured references in a um, special form that you can find it on the GCIE website. The exam format which is a really good question. Um, you need to know that you will have a maximum of seven years to complete the examination process since your application. Um, for the section one, you will have two years period from your first attempt with maximum of four attempts to not to re-enter again. In section two, you have also maximum four attempts um, and if you fail them all, you will not be able to enter again. We are speaking here about the GCIE exam. Section 1 is usually um, set up in January or July from each year. Um, and the section 1 is usually and two papers of single best answer. It's usually uh, happening in one of the Pearson View Center in the UK. Each paper is around two and a half hours and both of them in the new edition of the scan is a single best answer questions. If you manage to pass section one, so you will be eligible to enter section two, which usually takes place in May or November from each year. Um, it happens in different venues in the UK, mostly in the Royal College um, centres, either in um, Edinburgh, Glasgow. Um, it consists of eight stations of Viva exams, and each station is in uh, 20 minutes. Um, each station is on, on a special topic, one for the oncology and kidney and bladders, um, another one is a prostate and testis and penises cancer, then there is a pediatric station, emergency station, um, calculi and UTIs station, imaging and technology, bladder dysfunction, PBH and andrology, so that's an eight station. 
Then the most important question, how to prepare for the exam? I would suggest that you need to allow yourself three to four months to prepare for part one. And then um, <clears throat> after you've passed in part one, you will have, if you will enter the following exam straightforward, you have almost from three to four months to prep for the part two. Um, for part one, my golden advice is to go as many MCQs as you can before you enter. For part two, you would have already the knowledge if you pass the part one that will allow you to enter part two, but you, what you need to do is to prep for the way of answering the question in the exam. One of the good ideas that you may need to do is to form a study group, which is really, really important. It's not just to answer the question, it's to how to get out of your mouth the correct knowledge in the correct way to gain the marks in the exam. Because, as I said, you will know the knowledge, but it is a question how you will answer this question. So a small study group of maximum two or three candidates like you, and just you need to make it persistent, so you need to make it every day, even for 30 minutes, one hour maximum, that would be really helpful if you can make that in all your preparation duration till the exam day. What is the materials to prep for the exam? Um, number one, I would say Oxford Handbook of Urology. It's a really, really useful summary of the curriculum, which will be really useful in your revision. Number two, the EUA guidelines, especially the updated version, is really helpful and is really informative of the recent updates in the curriculum. Campbell textbook, well, it would be difficult to read the four big volumes of the Campbell, but at least you should go through the highlighted um, boxes in each chapter to make sure that you are aware of this information in it. Essentials of Pediatric Urology, that's a really, really informative, helpful book, especially in the pediatric curriculum. It's really written, well written, and you will gain a lot of information by reading it. Then for part, one, any MCQ question will be really helpful and I have put in the link below a lot of, of the uh, suggested books and where how can you buy them from the Amazon or other sources. So there is a essential revision notes, it's a really good book with a lot of MCQs in it and then um, there is Manit Area and Shurgle MCQ which is an, also an updated one and really helpful. Um, Proker MCQs also are really um, nice source and has a lot of information. It's slightly like an old one, but it's really, really helpful. Um, <clears throat> and then there is the EUA and AOA MCQs, which is really good, but it's a slightly of different format from the exam. So you can use them as a good practice, but they will be slightly different from what you are um, already um, will face in the exam. Another one important question, which course should I attend? In the UK, there are many courses that you shouldn't miss before the Viva exam. For example, the Agor course is run by Boston every year. It's a two days of focused andrology, um, helpful revision and Vivas. Uh, the Baus FRCS revision course is also a five days really focused revision lectures. And then there's a lot of vivas at the end of every day that you can practice with yourself. Um, the Evelina uh, pediatric viva course is a one day pediatric course. Um, it's really, 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 really helpful to revise and to practice some vivas um, uh, for the pediatric scenarios and section. Um, then the last one, the Presto Urology Institute viva course. You can actually take this course as a mock exam before your exam is really intensified, mock vivas, and is really, really good. At the end, I would say that exam fees is almost 1,900 sterling pounds, and you will pay more than that in preparation and in the buying the books and buying and applying for the courses. And your time also, you will spend a lot of, a lot of time to preparing for that. So my last advice to prepare really well and to enter only once you are ready and then you should be fine. And at the end, best wishes to everyone and feel free to contact me if there is any questions. And also, um, in this YouTube channel, I am trying to 
do some of the revision courses for selective topics. So it has come every now and then about one of the selected topics and in the coming few months I will upload more of them and hopefully you will find that really helpful. Thank you everyone.